In this video, we're going to learn three tests for monotonicity, which is does a sequence uh, strictly increase or strictly decrease, or at least those are the problems that we're going to look at. So we're going to start with the difference between successive terms, which is a sub n plus 1 minus a sub n. So the next term subtract the preceding term. Determine whether the sequence is strictly increasing or decreasing using that method. So we have brace notation, which means that our a sub n is n over 2n plus 1. So if a sub n is n over 2n plus 1, then a sub n plus 1 means we need to replace all the n's with n plus 1. So we have n plus 1 on the top. We have 2 times n plus 1 plus 1 on the bottom. Notice how important it is to put parentheses there because we are going to have to distribute this 2. So we end up with n plus 1 over 2n plus 3 as our a sub n plus 1. So now we're doing n plus 1 over 2n plus 3 minus n over 2n plus 1. And we're trying to figure out, does that, or is that greater than 0? And we'll just choose greater than 0 because we're going to try and assume that it's strictly increasing, uh, but it could be uh, strictly decreasing instead. Well, so now we have unlike fractions, so we need to make a common denominator. So the n plus 1 is going to need to be multiplied by the 2n plus 1. The n is going to be multiplied by the 2n plus 3, giving us a common denominator of 2n plus 3 uh, or times 2n plus 1, greater than 0. So now we need to FOIL that. So if we FOIL that, we're going to get 2n squared plus 3n plus 1. Uh, when we distribute the negative n, we get a negative 2n squared minus a 3n all over 2n plus 3, 2n plus 1. And let's see if that's greater than 0. So now if we combine like terms, the 2n squareds cancel out, the 3n's cancel out, leaving us with a positive 1 on the top and a 2n plus 3 times 2n plus 1 on the bottom. Well, that is going to be greater than or equal to 0 if we have n as positive numbers. And it would be because you cannot have positive terms. So so long as n is greater than or equal to 1, then this is true. And it is strictly increasing. Let's learn a second method. The ratio of successive terms is a sub n plus 1 divided by a sub n. So again, we have brace notation here. So our general term is n to the n divided by n factorial. So a sub n is n to the n over n factorial. So a sub n plus 1, we need to replace all the n's with n plus 1's. So we have an n plus 1 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. Well, so the ratio test says that I have to have n plus 1 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial all over n to the n over n factorial. And we're trying to see, is this going to be greater than 1? It could be less than 1, but we're going to again just assume that it's greater than 1 for now. Well, so we've got a complex fraction, a fraction divided by a fraction. Need to multiply by the reciprocal, so I've got n plus 1 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial multiply by the reciprocal n factorial over n to the n. And we're trying to see if that's greater than, excuse me, greater than 1. Pardon me. Greater than 1. And so now we're going to need to do uh, some tricks here. So let's see what we can do as far as changing this around. On the top left here, we can rewrite that as n plus 1 to the n times n plus 1 to the first. On the bottom left, we can rewrite this as n plus 1 times n factorial. Well, now let's see what happens. We can cancel out an n factorial. We can cancel out an n plus 1. So on the top, we clearly have 
n plus 1 to the n power. On the bottom, we have n to the n power. That's clearly going to be greater than 1. So this thing is strictly increasing again. Let's learn our third trick, which is using derivatives to help us do increasing or decreasing. So here we have a sub n. And I'm going to think of that as 3 minus 1n to the negative 1 for derivative purposes. When I take the derivative of that using the power rule, I would get 1n to the negative 2, or 1 over n squared. Well, so if we think about that, that's always going to be a positive number when we do our sign test. So if it's always positive, then it's going to be strictly increasing because with derivatives, a positive slope is an increasing function. 